and I'm Dana Perino along with Rachel Campos Duffy, Richard Fowler, Tucker Carlson, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. A Fox News alert, an avalanche of news today. We'll get to the stunning Steinle verdict out in San Francisco in just a moment. But we begin with the breaking new developments on the Mueller investigation in Washington. Today, former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn appeared in federal court and pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI about his conversations with Russia's ambassador during the transition last December. His plea agreement indicates he is providing information to the special counsel that's advancing the investigation. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge was inside the courtroom earlier and joins us now with the very latest details. Anything new, Catherine, since we spoke at 2 o'clock? Well, one of the most interesting developments uh, comes out of uh, reporting by uh, another one of our colleagues, uh, Brett Thayer. We were able to get information that in the spring of this year, FBI Director James Comey testified in a closed-door session that his agents had concluded that Flynn uh, made some sort of bad decisions or didn't remember things properly, seemed kind of confused about the timeline of events in December, but they didn't believe he had deliberately misled them. That's significant because if you fast forward to today, about seven months later, the special counsel investigators under Robert Mueller have concluded something very different, that there was a deliberate effort by Flynn to mislead the FBI about Flynn's contacts with the Russian ambassador. And Flynn agreed uh, in court today. What I would say about his appearance in court today is that he was very composed. He seemed to really reach inside himself and have that soldier's discipline and that 33 years of service in the military allowed him to hold it together as he made that guilty plea, which is a felony. The other interesting thing we're looking at tonight is that in the court records that were unsealed, there are references to what appear to be two members of the Trump transition team, a more junior person who received information from Flynn at Mar-a-Lago in December about these conversations with the Russian ambassador. We believe that to be KT McFarland uh, at this point, and then a more senior person who was directing Flynn to reach out to a number of countries, including Russia, and we believe that to be Jared Kushner. But I would give you this caveat. We were told that it wasn't like Kushner was saying to Flynn, you go out and just talk to the Russians. It was a kind of divvying up of the phone calls. There were different teams for different countries, and they were all tasked with a, a certain amount of outreach uh, at that time. So it's, it's not quite as sort of sinister sounding, perhaps, as it is uh, in the black and white of the court documents. But we believe the very senior person uh, was Jared Kushner and that he testified to that uh, in his session with the special counsel uh, in November, Dana. All right, Catherine Herridge, mm -hmm. thanks so much. We'll take it around the table. I worked at the Justice Department for about a year uh, and know to approach these things with caution. So I don't, I, I'm just waiting to see what else is going to happen out of this. I don't think that we know the full story yet. What do you think, Greg? Well, I always like to focus on the media. And the media, they remind me of a contestant on Price is Right. <laughs> they, were ex they were expecting a brand new car, which was Russian collusion. And instead they got a crock pot which is a lie, a single crime uh, committed by a pleading guilty to it, a single isolated event that has nothing to do with Russian collusion because it happened after the election. So they said they, the, the ecstatic media is going to be ecstatic for a few days, but then it's going to wear off and they're going to realize that this is a far cry from what they really wanted. And they're actually seeding turf on this, that this is far from what they dreamt. But what really bugs me about this is if you look at why the meeting took place, why were the contacts made? Was it anything nefarious? No, it was something noble and possible. I mean, something, I, in my opinion, noble and correct was to get Russia involved in fighting terror and fighting ISIS. And uh, actually their version of a reset button that actually made kind of sense, which we may or may not have happened. I don't know. But that's what this was about in my opinion. Yeah. Tucker, you're giving me that weird look you give people on your show. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, I'm, just thinking just, that, no, I'm actually agreeing with everything you say. I think the irony... But no, is, you're, you're, you say that to the people you're about to yell at. You say, I agree completely. But in this case, it's heartfelt. <laughs> okay. No, I actually think that, that the General Flynn did do something wrong. In fact, indefensible. He took money from a foreign government to influence American policy mm -hmm. when he was on his way to being national security advisor from the Erdogan government in Turkey. I don't think you can defend that. I'm ashamed that he did that. Mm -hmm. And that's not what he's being punished for. He's being punished for lying, which is the classic charge you level when you don't really have mm -hmm. the underlying charge proved. But more to the point, is there a crime in contacting Russia to talk about how to coordinate your efforts in Syria against ISIS? That seems not just... But maybe he's getting the chance to do this guilty plea 
because For sure. of something there's else. A lot I mean, there's a lot. No, but, but I guess what bugs me is the <laughs> idea that speaking to Russia is in itself a crime. I don't think that's, what, they, I don't think that's, what, I don't think that's what the prosecuting documents are saying. I think what, what are they the, saying? The prosecuting documents saying that he lied to, F he lied to the FBI, number one. And I think they use that as sort of a carrot and stick to say, we will charge you for just this one crime so you could tell us what else you know. And in his statement to the press, he indicated, I plan on working, uh, fully cooperating with the special counsel. I, I got it, but what's, not what, to what mention, would the underlying crime be? I'm just not, confused. We don't know that yet, because it's still sealed. And well, not to mention the fact that talking, when you are a transitioning government, when the Obama administration was still the the government in control, mm -hmm. talking to a foreign agency about what, a foreign entity about what you can, what you will and will not do is against the Logan Act, which is the act that says only one administration can talk to a foreign government at one time. Right. So he did violate a law, but we'll have to see what Mueller does but here. How is it any more different than when Obama said, I'll have more flexibility after, you know, the election? I mean, I think that Greg brings up a really great... When did he say that? Obama said hot that. Mike. Oh, hot, hot Mike. Hot Mike. Hot Mike moment. What do you mean, hot how Mike. is it any different? Well, what I mean is that it's a transition, and they're signaling to these people on these other countries that, you know, policies are going to change. I think that Greg brings up a really good point about... I often do, Rachel. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> I guess you I'm, passed your yeah, first show. I passed my first test. <laughs> That's all it takes. you got to agree with Greg. That's that all it takes. Um, but, but I think you bring up a point. There is a giddiness, kind of like the giddiness we saw with um, Rachel Maddow when she thought she had the big taxes thing. Um, I think you're right. They got a crockpot here because in the end, um, what they really want to do is not Russia. What they really want to do is stop the Trump agenda. And Trump was just a vehicle for this agenda. The American people still want all the things that Trump wants to do. They still want those policies and those ideas to come forward. So whether all this Russia stuff happens or not, I think it leads the Democrats again down this little this little street off of what they need to do. And what they need to do is figure out why they lost working class Americans. I, because we know that's why they lost the election, so, so, not Russia. So, Rachel, I'll give you that. And I've said that before. I think Democrats need to work on our message. We need to learn, learn how to talk to blue collar voters and some white collar voters. And I'm not an uh, impeachment Democrat. I'm not like, let's go impeach them. I'm actually waiting for all the facts to come out. I've said that over and over again. But when you look at where we are right now, the fact that Mike Flynn, one of the highest officials in Donald Trump's national security apparatus has said he is going to work with the, pro the special counsel prosecuting or looking into this Russia collusion. I think that's a big deal. Well, I think I'm, to I'm, downplay wait, wait, hold that on, hold on, hold on. is silly. Wait, no, slow down. Is that what he has said? I'm going to look into collusion with Russia. Collusion about what? The context that we know of took place. It is a after, Russia wait, investigation. Let me, let, me, let me just finish my question to you, and then you can inform me of this. What would the collusion look like, potentially? I have no idea. Place. That's what we're trying to figure out. No, but out. this is, I think... After the election. It was after the election, so what would they be colluding on, exactly? We'd, I mean, here's Fighting the thing. Fighting ISIS there's multiple, It doesn't matter. Yeah. There's the multiple... Point. It doesn't matter. Well, well, That's how this started. The whole, the whole premise was about the election, but they really don't care about the election. This is about unseating a president. That's, that's, right. that's, that's, that's not. Right. I, I'm sorry. That's not, I, just, I have to say that that's just not true, because if you look at all the... You have, you're looking at the Flynn indictment in a vacuum, and you can't do that. You have to look at Flynn. You have to look at Papa. You have to look at Manafort. Oh. Manafort was indicted for things that happened during the convention prior to the election. Papadopoulos, he was in meetings prior to the election. So let's, before we sit here and say, oh, you can't look at Flynn in a vacuum. But I'm not saying that. I'm just asking you what it large, means. What are you I, saying? I don't know. Okay. I, and that's what Dana's saying. We don't know what it means. I, we are. We have an expert prosecutor, the best in the country, okay, looking at this. Know, what might it mean? Like, what, what's the worst case I don't scenario? want to make any assumptions, because okay. I don't totally. know. What I think... How are you I, confused? They rigged the Sochi Olympics. That's what we're going to no, find out. No, no, out. I, I mean, I'm so, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't think there's any confusion to be had here. I think what Mueller, Mueller is looking into whether or not Trump and his associates talk to the Russians, work with the Russians, colluded with the Russians. About what? We all already know that the Russians engage in our election and they jeopardized our democracy, number we one. We don't know we that. Yes, and we do. The DNI, the DNI, what, the what DNI I, said, and multiple intelligence agencies over going. and over have said that the Russians can, try to compromise our election. Can, that is a fact. Can I tell you what Trump really is guilty of? It's he not is, a fact, Richard. Trump it is, is a fact. Trump is guilty of bad judgment. A lot of people told him not to give that very high-level position Agreed. to Flynn. But this is a very common rookie mistake. Uh, Dana, you know this. You're in politics in that... Um, a lot of candidates, first-time candidates. Remember, we're talking about a first-time candidate. He's our president, but he's a first-time candidate. You feel very loyal to the people that brought you 
um, t you know, to victory. And so I think he had, Trump had a, a, a very typical first candidate mistake of giving a job to somebody who was on the campaign who probably shouldn't have had that job. And look, he only lasted 20 some days. So they reversed course well, right away. Well, I mean, away. he was lobbying for the Turkish government. Right, he should not have. So that's yeah. totally no, disqualifying. That, I mean, and I just want to be clear, I'm absolutely. not defending Flynn. I and mean, that's appalling. I wish he were being punished for the actual crime. Thank you. He might be. Yes. I mean, but maybe the reason that he's not being punished for the actual crime is for some reason that we don't know. Well, that's, that's and I think possible. that is, I mean, we, trying, this is why this takes a long time. It might be wrapped up sooner than we think. But remember, it was also President Obama who told President Trump, be careful of this guy. Right. It's Sally Yates who goes to them at the White House and right. goes to the White House from the Justice Department and says, I think you guys have a problem here. She gets fired. The president's calling for Comey to go easy on Flynn. That got, and you. that's how they end up with the special counsel. I don't know how all of this pulls together, but it's certainly not nothing. And by the way, if it's, I agree, nothing here when you're calling to Russia to say, hey, make sure we have established contact, no problem. Somebody like Mike Flynn, who is a seasoned patriot, 33 years in the military, why lie about that? That's the thing that I don't understand, but he pled guilty to it today. Thank but why you. isn't the FBI also... Because they're threatening why, him. That's but why isn't Mueller also... Or, or do we know if he is? No, but why the underlying, though? Why lie? Why lie? They, they're threatening lie, him. So let, me, let me put it this lied? way. Why lie? I haven't, yeah. the, I haven't the faintest idea, no, but I do know question. having known a number of people who've been busted on the lying to a federal agent thing, and I don't want to appear to be defending someone I just attacked for lobbying for yeah. Turkey... But I, we are vesting far too much trust in the FBI. Do you That's have right. any idea what it looks like when they come after you? Do you know anyone who's been gone after by the FBI? Very well. Do, yeah, I, I do, so too. Do I. I was a I do too. person for and one so for several my years. My question is, you know, I like the FBI and I support American law enforcement, but which is a potentially a greater threat to you, Mike Flynn or the FBI? It's not a close call. So I don't think we should just assume that because someone has pled to lying that there's an actual crime in that. And he said he's a broken man. His house is under, uh, he's selling his house. His, his finances are in trouble. These are all very good motivations to, you know, cooperate. All right. Well, I think we're going to finish that up, right? Okay, much more ahead. Widespread outrage after a five-time deported illegal immigrant is cleared in the murder of Kate Steinley. Right back with our reaction. Now to maybe the most stunning verdict since OJ. Last night in San Francisco, the illegal immigrant at the center of the Sanctuary City debate in America was acquitted of murdering 32-year-old Kate Steinle on a pier in San Francisco two years ago. The jury sided with the defense, which argued that the shooting was accidental. The jury only found Jose Zarate guilty of being a felon in possession of a firearm. The jury was not told about the seven felonies he had been convicted of or the fact that he'd been deported five times. President Trump calls that verdict disgraceful and yet another reason to build a wall. The president predicts Democrats will pay a big political price for it in the next two elections for their weaknesses on crime and immigration. Meanwhile, Zarate's attorneys wasted no time at all in politicizing the whole thing. Watch. For those who might criticize this verdict. There are a number of people that have commented on this case in the last couple of years. The Attorney General of the United States, the President and Vice President of the United States. Let me just remind them that they are themselves under investigation uh, by a special prosecutor in Washington, D.C., and they may themselves soon avail themselves of the presumption of innocence and the beyond a reasonable doubt standard. And so I would ask them to reflect on that before they comment or disparage the result in this case. That was Matt Gonzalez, not just an attorney, by the way, also a politician. He ran on the Green Party ticket for vice president with Ralph Nader back in 2008. You may remember him if you voted that ticket. Well, the Trump <laughs> Justice Department has just filed an arrest warrant for Zarate. I have to say, Dana, the first thing that jumped out, uh, jumped to my mind when I saw this was, boy, if it... First, how wildly politicized it was. Yep. Like O.J., the lawyers attempted to make it about something bigger, about Trump, deportation, the wall. Um, Except for not in the courtroom. 
Not right outside the courtroom. That's the thing that is uh, that's the th what, I, what I thought of, which is I, I sat on a jury once in California. Um, the prosecutor, I, I do think that the person was guilty, but the prosecution's case was so weak and so poorly presented that we couldn't get there uh, as a jury. And I do have to wonder, like, why would not any of these other inform other information been important to provide to the jury? So that they could make this decision. Who decides like, that? The not? judge? Is it the judge that decides that those? I don't know aren't why the prosecution decided to do it that way. But we, I mean, I guess what we know, Rachel, is this guy was a homeless illegal immigrant who'd yeah. been deported five previous times, had a drug problem, admitted taking drugs right before this, mm -hmm. who was holding the gun when it fired and shot Kate Steinle. And by the way, the. Anybody who knows anything about firearms knows it's a, it was a federal gun. It was taken right. from a BLM officer. It didn't have a two-pound trigger pull. That's a lie. So, like, just knowing those facts, how could you acquit? It doesn't make any sense to me except for what Dana brought up, which is that these things were not presented to the jurors, and so they made a decision um, without some of this information, which means it's an incomplete... I mean, information's power, and so how yeah. do you make a right decision? But I will say, I do think they didn't just politicize it. They obviously also racialized it, um, and I think that there's a, a feeling among... Democrats, when they watch this, um, I wonder, do they really think this is how you win over Hispanics? I'm Hispanic. Um, I know that Hispanics come to this country because of lack of rule of law in their own countries. Right. Um, unless you are on the far, far, far left where you think there should be open borders, I don't know how they think that coming and supporting this verdict or in any way saying this is the right decision wins over people who still, I mean, Hispanics still want to live in a country that's safe, still want to live in a country where somebody who shoots an innocent person goes to jail. I, I'm really confused about this as a strategy. Well, sure, and I don't think most people are looking at this. It's not obvious why you would see it through a racial lens. I wonder, Richard, be as honest as you can, if this had been the opposite, if Kate Steinle had murdered an illegal immigrant on the Embarcadero in San Francisco and was acquitted for it, mm. How many fires would be burning right now in San Francisco? Well, I think you have to, you have to back this train up a little bit. Um, and let's talk about the politicalization of it. I think it was politicized. Not, I mean, the left might have done some. They might have politicized it, but the right also. I mean, Donald Trump did a press conference with yes, her he picture. Yes, he did. I mean, he continued. Kate, then the Congress, they, put, they passed, they quickly put together Kate's law. So, I mean, Republicans are guilty for politicizing this case as well. Um, well, do you see a political <laughs> element in it, though, since he was released against the request of the Obama administration, federal authorities, back in 2015? No, too, no listen, I'm not by saying... By the city, because they had a sanctuary city policy. I mean, there's no, a political I'm not, component. I, I'm not, listen, I'm not saying that we don't need some sort of immigration reform. And when I say immigration reform, I don't mean instant amnesty. When I say immigration reform, I mean bo border security coupled with dealing with the 11 million people living here in the shadows, also dealing with those who have committed crimes in this country and how we get them out. We need to put all three of those things together. And I think the ideal to say that you know, immigration reform is just instant amnesty is wrong, right? This guy shouldn't be in the country. I agree there. But he does not represent the other 11 million individuals who come to this country. They play by the, ru they play by the rules. They work really hard. This guy's not one of them. And so to lump him in, as we've seen folks on the right do with them, is unfortunate. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know I, if they're living in the shadows. I have a lot of people here illegally on my show bragging about their status, not, not yeah. more in the spotlight. Um, <laughs> but I, I wonder... If this is evidence the Democratic Party has changed, Hillary Clinton actually criticized the city of San Francisco two years ago for letting this guy out. Can you imagine a Democratic leader today criticizing the sanctuary city policy? Yeah, I mean, to risk using a cliche, this is why Trump won, yeah. because yeah. this is a reminder that in, the, in his... You can keep shaking your head, Richard, but... I will. Just let, just, <laughs> I will continue maybe shaking I can, look, my head. At least we now know what it takes to get deported from a sanctuary city. First, you got to kill somebody. Then you got to go to court. Then you got to get acquitted. Now you get, now you get deported. Look, if a law was in place that if it had been followed would have prevented this. That eternal truth exists independent of whatever happened in that courtroom. One of the problems with this case is that we talked about justice for months, but we were talking about immigration reform. We weren't actually talking about the case. In October, when we brought up the case here on this table, I said there was a possibility of an acquittal because of the whole ricocheted bullet thing. People said, no, that's impossible. I don't understand why an accidental killing is not involuntary manslaughter because right. by definition, an right. accidental killing is involuntary manslaughter. They made the mistake of going for murder. Yeah. Right. And they, if they had just, st maybe they did it on purpose, I don't know. But they, if they had stuck to involuntary manslaughter, he might have been found guilty on that. But the fact is, you know, national security, border, law enforcement, th these are the three legs on the table that Trump ran on.
And as long as you get to see things like this happening, he's going to remain in power. So you can sit here and go, hey, this is a, a gloat over this horrible misjustice, but or injustice, but I, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that, uh, you know, murder involuntary manslaughter should be a charge. And I think there's a lot of police officers who shot unarmed black men who should be charged for that's a what, that's involuntary a what about manslaughter ism as well. That had nothing to do with this story. All right. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We have Just more saying. on the subject and you're getting a taste of how exciting it's going to be when we come right back. Back now with more on the Kate Steinle verdict, the acquittal of illegal immigrant Jose Inez Garcia Zarate. <laughs> A spokeswoman for the Justice Department believes that San Francisco's sanctuary policy is to blame for Steinle's murder. This was a person who had been deported five times and kept returning. He intentionally went to San Francisco, he said, because he knew about their sanctuary policies. He'd been convicted of multiple crimes, including drug crimes. Uh, this is a person who never should have been on that pier, and Kate yeah. Steinle would still be alive today if he hadn't been. Dana. Mm -hmm. What are the political implications of all this? I mean, we see there's all these legal things that we talked about before, but there are some real politics on that are going to be affected. Well, this is a case, I guess, that is known nationally. So, um, but uh, we've talked about on this show, like some things that used to happen uh, in a city would never have been known pub uh, federally, uh, right. I'm sorry, nationally. Um, but because everything now is politicized and it is also on cable news and it's uh, political. But for this one, I think is for good reason. Sometimes you have a case that is a flashpoint for additional action. That's been true for some of the Black Lives Matter situations. But this one in particular, I think, makes those cities ha that are sanctuary cities have to answer to citizens who say, why are we doing this? Why does this make sense? And I understand that there are some police officers and especially the Sheriff's Association that thinks that sanctuary cities is actually better for them for crime fighting purposes. If that is really what they believe, then they need to do a much better job of convincing the rest of America that that is the case. That, that's not a universal agreement with right. those associations, but the, certainly there are police officers that say that. Um, and so I would, I think that this will come to a head, and I would imagine that uh, Kate Steinle might get justice um, if the federal charges that were just announced right before we became, came to air are successful. And may, perhaps that prosecution will be better. And Greg, do you think that DACA and all the, you know, momentum that was behind that, it, does this change how that's going to be resolved in any way? Uh, I, I don't think so. Not with our attention span. You don't think we'll that, be on, we'll be on you don't think else. border security is now going to be more likely to be addressed as part of that? I don't know. I don't know. I guess so. I'm, I'm interested in, in, like, the fact that as a country we can't handle all of these unexploded shells that are all over the country, men that are uh, that should be in places not on streets. So it doesn't matter. It, to me, it matters. This guy's illegal because it, because it could have been prevented. There are people like this in, in all cities right now that are uh, that are just wandering. They should be in institutions. They be mm -hmm. should be getting help. They should be back in their own countries. But we have no way of actually figuring this problem out. And if you walk around New York, you see it everywhere. You look at Southern California right now, is just unbelievable. It is just cities of men, you know, doing horrible things in public because that's mm -hmm. you're not you can't institutionalize men, the mentally ill. And I think this guy was actually mentally ill. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. it was preventable because he should yeah. have been deported what five times ago. Yeah. Richard, I mean, the president won on the issue of immigration and people's frustration with it. And he sort of touched on it. And I don't even think any of the other Republican candidates were willing to touch this. What is the response now, do you think, from the Democrats? I mean, they're seeing this. There's a reaction to this. American people, I think, in general, think this person should not have been in the country, that we should have stronger immigration. So do you think that, the, that this is going to cause the Democrats to be more entrenched in their position or to maybe come around a little bit in hopes of winning over some of the people that they lost? Well, I actually agree with Dana on this. I think this is a, this is a flashpoint. This Kate Steinle case is a flashpoint. And hopefully, I doubt it will happen. Maybe I'm just an <laughs> idealist. But hopefully in Washington, we will saw what happened a couple years ago when the Gang of Eight got together and tried to put together uh, where Democrats are, where Republicans are, and meet in the middle. And I think we have an opportunity to do it here. We, we, like I said in the last segment, there's 11 million people here living in the shadows. We have students who've come to this country at no fault of their own, who want to be Americans, who pay their taxes, who do everything right. And at the same time, Democrats 
have said, Chuck and Nancy, as, as Donald Trump likes to call them, have said that they're willing to work with the president on border security. So if they're willing to work with the president on border security and Republicans are willing to say, OK, we can't deport 11 million people tomorrow, then let's come to the middle and figure out how we get true, real, comprehensive immigration what reform. What because our immigration laws are broken. They're, is, all, they're almost is, as old as me. And actually, what if we treated the gun? No, but let's. What, they what are broken, Tucker. What if we treated the gun laws the way Democrats treat immigration laws? How would you feel about that if we just ignored them? Right. For the All your gun laws. control laws that you call for after a shooting. What if we said we don't care? We're going to do open carry. We're going to have a sanctuary city for open carry. We don't care. Well, they'd flip out. I mean, look. The truth is. That's what you guys are doing look, now. The, no, that's not We're true. That's not true. The lesson of the last election, as you noted, is that a large group of people used to vote Democrat and no longer do. That's right. However, Democrats have made no meaningful effort to win them over. Instead, they have made a clear and conscious decision to import new voters to replace them. And that is why that party has moved radically to the left, to the no border position. You can't find... No, who, no what do no, you mean? We don't I, have, I do no, this we don't, every, I just, I just I do said, this every night. Tucker, you I hear you. You can say that all you I hear want, you. but the truth is, I hear you, but there's when, no concession. When Nancy Wait, let me Pelosi... Just Hold on. So now, <laughs> Nancy Pelosi spoke to a group of people who came to this country illegally last month and said, I congratulate you for doing that. If you have the chief lawmaker of the Democratic side congratulating people for breaking the laws she passed, something has really changed. That's the point. When, but, when Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer go to the White House and say, Mr. President, we're willing to work with you on border security, I don't know what else you want from Democrats. Well, that's not open borders. I, don't, I can't, tell, I can't borders. tell whether you're naive or disingenuous, but the truth I'm is not being this naive president or disingenuous. was just elected on the promise to build a wall so would that, would that be part of the compromise you're wall? suggesting? He hasn't built it. Thank you. Moving on. Well, uh, but I do, think, I do think the irony, before we move on, I do think the irony Good is point. that Ooh. Donald Trump, of all people, is the one person who actually can make immigration reform happen because he wants border, because border security was the only thing holding up um, immigration reform I do think before. that we should really say, like you that. said, that, that none of the other candidates were willing to put it go forward with it. But Ted Cruz actually did introduce the Kate Steinle it, law uh, in Ted the Cruz. Senate. He, that it, the Republicans were united in the Senate. It did pass the House. It was the Democrats who filibustered it. Agreed. But no one believes more. Uh, Donald, uh, people, the American people believe Donald Trump more than any of the other candidates that he will well, actually genuinely secure the border. So I think that's why it puts him in. He said well, it for 10 months, and we're still waiting on a wall. Well, but that's okay. But Are you anxiously border, waiting for one? No. Border crossing down 70%. Why would you be against the wall? I, I don't right. think a wall solves anything. Because if you build a 13-foot oh. wall, they're right, going to build a 14-foot ladder. We gotta move I've on seen here. that bumper sticker. That's, uh, Republicans say they've secured enough votes to clear the tax bill through the Senate. President Trump appears to be on the verge of his first major legislative victory. We'll talk about that up next. We have the vote. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell proudly announced today that Republicans have secured enough support to pass their sweeping overhaul of our nation's tax system. Arizona Senator Jeff Flake was the key holdout, but he backed the plan this afternoon. A final vote could come as early as tonight or even tomorrow. What's your take? What's your take on this, Rachel? Well, first of all, this is great news. Um, not the best bill, but this is, you know, you can't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, I think that, you know, we've seen a lot of talk from the Bannon side of the Republican Party and others like, throw these bums out. Let's start new. Let's get new blood. I think this makes the case for why... Someone like Mitch McConnell, who understands how to navigate the legislative process, can cobble these votes together. This was not um, easy to do. I predict also that um, if they made the right changes, we may see that it will not go to conference, that um, the House may just vote on what um, they have there because everyone's afraid of going back to the Senate where it's, it's tough to get those votes. So I think you might, you might see um, the House vote on the Senate bill as is. Dana? Like, then that's when uh, how do you, do a bill that, becomes a law. Think? Yeah, and I think, that's, I think it's possible because yeah. I think they don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. They just want to get, <laughs> they just want to be able to go home and say, we did this. And then I think that what will happen is that um, the Republicans who used to be concerned about the deficit um, will hope that the economic growth is what they hope it will be. And then, the, then basically the Republicans and the Democrats will have a debate about the results. Um, that's right. But I do think they want to get to yes and get it over with. And, and I think that the, the results already of Trump's economic agenda are doing well. I live in, in, in Wisconsin, as, as you guys know. I have um, uh, 
brothers-in-laws and sisters-in-laws who are small business owners, um, they can't keep up with the orders. Um, they're turning customers away. They're turning down jobs. Um, places that were the forgotten America, this is rural Wisconsin. Um, Donald Trump has a lot of credibility on economics. He went out and sold this uh, tax plan as it's going to help. I actually, you know, though I wish it could have been more bold. I was, I'm a big flat tax person. I wish we had gone in that route. But look, I think that this is Boy, going to. I hope to, you're right. I, I think it's going to, 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 to. I don't know anyone who actually understands it. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to a lot of people That's on true. the Hill. What I talked to my accountant. What is this? No idea. Um, I have really high hopes. I mean, there's only really one question from the last election, and that is how do you save the middle class, which mm. is shrinking and dying younger and believes it's going to make less than its parents made. It's a disaster. And so everything the federal government do, does has to be focused on fixing that one problem. And, right. I, and I really hope this bill does that. I, I don't think it does. Um, well, I guess we'll see. I guess I am very bothered that that's not obvious going into this. But when you bring company, when you let that money come back overseas and you encourage and incentivize companies to start building factories in America, that does make a difference. I hope so. so but then you've well, also seen companies making more money than any time in history. History, and we still have persistently high permanent unemployment, like 100 million yeah. people, and wages are still stuck. So, so I, I so, hope that's true. Uh, so I agree with you, uh, Tucker, which is a rarity in America, um, <laughs> because I, I do think that this bill is missing how you deal with the middle class. And everything in this bill that was taken out of it, all the, the things they repealed, were things that benefited middle class, like, for example, you know, being able to deduct your student loan interest rate. But, Greg, your turn. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Uh, this is tax reform the way shaking up a can of Coke is Coke reform. <laughs> this, is not, this is not an overhaul. It's I'm not reform. That. I so agree. It's, 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 it, 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 whoever wrote sweeping reform needs their head examined. This is, this is more that. liberal than it is conservative. No, I it, disagree. The, the, the top 1% provides 40% of the federal income tax revenue. Is this helping them or hurting them? It's hurting them. I think the corporate part... Was f is fine. I'm for that. The individual thing is a mess. It's a mess. And trying to sugarcoat it is hilarious. Good luck. But it sucks. And I think you're, I agree with you. It's like I talk to people and I, sa I said it. it's like trying to untangle your iPhone earbuds. When you're trying to do, you're trying to go like, what? And then you have to do this? And then wait, then you do this. Oh, so we're going to give you this. But then we're going to take this back. Oh, no, but then you can have that. That's what this is. We want something simple. As you said in the break, something bold. We have an opportunity to do something bold. We talk a great game. We talked a great game for decades. And then we get the opportunity. And what do we do? This oatmeal, this bland Pale oatmeal. But you can't, you can't touch do Touchdown, America! Greg, you cannot do the bold reform that you and me and all of us here no, want. No, not me. Count, with, with, me out. count him out. Okay, reform. fine. But you don't cannot do that without the Senate changing the rules because they had no, to fix this. You, 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 you just got to come to the table. Thank you. If you came to the table and worked they, with Democrats <laughs> and Republicans, you could pass real reform. That's, that's Ronald right. Reagan did it in the 80s, and we'll be right back because it's Facebook Friday up next. <laughs>